This video was sponsored by Wix. Wix lets you build websites for virtually anything. Sure, you can create a website for weddings, baby showers, and graduations, but if you're like me, you find all those things incredibly boring. I'd be more interested in creating a tech blog to document my adventures in PC building, or a place to host my videos where I decide when they get demonetized, which would be never. The possibilities are endless, and Wix gives the user full creative control on how the site looks and behaves. So if you're a DIY fanatic, you'll probably enjoy the site building process as much as the finished product. Customize your web pages with photos, video, or vector art, add social media bars to boost your online presence, or utilize one of the many apps to extend the functionality of the site. Even if you're a total noob at building a website, these features are laid out within an intuitive UI so all the tools and resources are right at your finger clicks. Wordplay. <laughs> I know you've got some big ideas. We all do. Turn them into something real today with your own website from Wix and get started by clicking the link below. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I am assembling August's PC of the month, which I'm really excited about because it's a system that I'll be using personally for editing and gaming while I'm away at events. Obviously it's gonna need to be very small. We have a small form factor case, a very special case indeed. Now of course I do bring my laptop everywhere, everywhere I go as well, um, which is super convenient, but every now and then I just feel like hooking up a basic old desktop to a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse just to have the full functionality of, of, of a desktop PC. So that's what we're gonna be assembling today. You could almost call this a spiritual successor to the go anywhere, do anything PC that I assembled uh, a while back in the Note 202 from Fractal Design. We're gonna be using the Dan Case A4 SFX case today, um, which is uh, the brand spanking new model V3. Okay, this just came out, it just arrived, and so that's another reason why I'm really excited. I've never done a build inside of any of the Dan cases. The first, this is the first one I've ever ha got my hands on. So again, I'm just really excited. You, you guys know that I love small form factor builds. The biggest new feature that comes with this case is support for a 92 millimeter AIO. You guys might be thinking, do those even exist? I thought the same thing, but apparently they do because I, I, I managed to get one. This is the Asa Tech 545. LC. 90, look at how cute. You can fit the whole radiator in your hand, right? And you got a standard Asatec water block, as you might expect. Tubing is like nice and short because they're expecting you to put this inside of a tiny case. Um, and so, uh, yeah, this is apparently supposed to mount natively now inside of the Dan Case uh, A4 V3, along with a 92 millimeter fan that we'll be needing for this. It didn't come with a fan. So I actually pulled the Noctua NF A914 off of the CPU cooler that it's included with. Of course, you can buy this fan by itself, a la carte or whatever, but since I had the cooler around, uh, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing a long-term borrow, I guess. Uh, so it's gonna mount, boom, like that, or like that, or like that, or like that, I haven't decided yet. But these two things going in this case, it should be pretty glorious. Now let's get into the core specs, shall we? With that 92 millimeter AIO, I will be cooling the Ryzen 7 2700X eight core, 16 thread CPU. This seems like a good contender for this build. I was thinking about going Skylake X with that ASRock Mini ITX board and just going balls to the wall, but I don't want to have to worry about heat. And the Skylake X chips are not known to stay the coolest. Uh, the Ryzen 7s stay relatively cool for the amount of horsepower that they're, they're packing, so uh, I think this is going to be a safer, smarter bet for this particular system overall. It's gonna be less headache, less worry and all that. Uh, so excited to be using that, along with the ROG Strix X470i gaming motherboard. Uh, I recently did a video on the B450 version of this board, almost identical except for the chipset itself, which gives you a bit more connectivity, uh, which I won't really be needing. Honestly, the B450 version would have worked perfectly for my needs, but since I have the X470 board lying around, might as well use it. We'll be pairing that with a kit of G-Skill Trident Z RGB DDR4 at 3200 speed. And this is actually a 32 gigabyte kit because I wanted to max out the memory as much as I could on our mini ITX board here since I will be doing 4K video editing and 16 gigs just doesn't really cut it for me uh, at the uh, for the amount of editing that I do when I'm on the go. So hopefully this will get the job done. It, it also looks pretty, so, so, so it's a win-win. Uh, next to that, we have our Samsung 970 Pro. It's a 500 gig NVMe M.2 SSD. You can see I didn't have any retail packaging. This is actually a sample that AMD sent me along with their Threadripper 2 kit earlier this week. This is one of two drives though that I'll be putting inside of the system. I'm still waiting on a two terabyte WD Blue, uh, which is a SATA based M.2 drive. And since this motherboard supports two M.2 drives, because it has two M.2 slots, uh, we're gonna be able to connect just about two and a half terabytes of SSD storage 
um, without ever having to bust out a SATA cable. So that's really exciting. Powering the system is the Corsair SF450, which has an 80 plus gold certification. It's fully modular and of course it's SFX so that it'll fit uh, just fine inside of our DAN case here. Excellent unit uh, and that should be enough power to drive all the things you see here. And finally, our graphics card is the Zotac GTX 1080 Ti Mini. This thing's an absolute animal for its size. And to be honest, I could have fit a longer graphics card inside of the DAN case because it's just so well designed to, to house full size hardware. But I wanted to go the mini route anyway to leave a bit more breathing room because when you max out the space in a case this small, uh, it really does harm your airflow, in my experience. And it's also just more difficult to, 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 to do your cable routing uh, more tidily. If that's, if that's a word, it's probably not. But all things considered, I think this is gonna be a phenomenal build. Can't wait to get it started. So why, why don't we do that right now? Alright, the build's done, and it definitely took me a lot longer than I anticipated. This is certainly one of the more challenging small form factor builds that I've assembled in recent memory, but I think that's because we're dealing with such a tiny case. There's hardly enough clearance to get all the various components installed, and they're just kind of just barely touching and rubbing, rubbing up against each other, but that's sort of the point, right, is to, is to cram as much hardware into as little of a footprint as possible. Um, but uh, it looks great. Looks really nice. There were definitely some challenges that I encountered along the way, so let's talk about those. For starters, the radiator fan that I snagged from that knock to a cooler, um, the screws that it came with were not long enough to actually thread into the radiator. The, the, the threaded part of those screws is shorter than the width of the fan, and that's because the heat sink that comes with this cooler uh, has raised uh, threads or th raised mounting points that kind of go into the fan holes just enough for those screws to thread But they certainly don't work on a standard radiator So what I ended up having to do is take a pair of scissors and chisel away at the four mounting holes of the fan Just so that the screws would sit a little bit lower uh, And thus protrude from the other side allowing us to thread into the radiator. So that's how we solved that problem um, It could have been a lot worse, but luckily we found a pretty easy solution Another obstacle, uh, once again, stems from the AIO in some way. The power supply was interfering with the radiator fan, with that Noctua fan. Uh, the cables were just sticking out a little too far, and even though they're flat cables, they were still just rubbing up against the fan, and, and the blades weren't able to spin at all, at all. So what I ended up having to do was kind of route half the cables 
this way towards the motherboard and the other half of the cables towards the other side of the case uh, on the graphics card side. That sort of split the, uh, the, the width, split the load, and I was able to get everything in there without interfering with the fan. The problem at that point was having excess cabling on the GPU side. And so if I turn this around, actually I'll give you guys a look at it right now. So here you can see our 24 pin ATX cables that I've sort of routed upwards and, and flat against the power supply as much as possible. And I actually zip tied them to the PCIe cables up top uh, to, to encourage that. Uh, that way it's just further away from the radiator fan and also really flat uh, as to not interfere with the graphics card backplate. So there you go, that's the system. Um, I cannot wait for part two personally because we're, we're dealing with uh, an AIO of a, of a very particular size that I've never worked with before. I have no idea how it's gonna behave with the 2700X. I'm not exactly sure what to expect with our GPU temps. Um, it's gonna be quite interesting. We have a lot of questions that uh, are sure to be answered in part two, so stick around for that. Guys, that's gonna do it for me. Toss a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Also get subscribed for more tech videos on the way, and uh, check me out on Floatplane if you wanna watch my videos a week early without ads for three bucks a month. I'll put a link for that in the video description. As always, thank you guys for watching, have a good one, and I'll see y'all in the next video.